um, what experience from your past have been most useful in preparing you for the presidency? Well, being a businessman has been a great experience for me. I've loved it. I've always loved business. I've always been good at building things. And I've always been very successful at making money. I'd buy things that would fail, that would be failures, and I'd turn them around and try and get them for the right price, and then I'd turn them around and make them successful. And I've been good at it. And that takes a certain ability. And, you know, historically, I guess there's never really been a businessman or business person uh, elected president. It's always been a general or a politician. Mm -hmm. Throughout history, it's always been a general. You had to be a general, but mostly it was politicians. You never have a businessman. And then, in all fairness, I was saying to Klaus uh, last night, had the opposing party to me won, some of whom you backed, some of the people in the room, instead of being up almost 50 percent, the stock market is up since my election almost 50 percent, uh, rather than that, I believe the stock market from that level, the initial level, would have been down close to 50 percent. That's where we were heading. I really believe that. Because they were going to put on massive new regulations. You couldn't breathe. It was choking our country to death. And I was able to see that, Klaus, as a business person. Uh, the other thing is I've always seemed to get, for whatever reason, a disproportionate amount of press or media. And <laughs> throughout my whole life, Somebody will explain someday why, but I've always gotten a lot. And as a businessman, I was always treated really well by the press. You know, the numbers speak and things happen. But I've always really had a very good press. And it wasn't until I became a politician that I realized how nasty, how mean, how uh, vicious, and how fake the press can be as the cameras start going off in the back. <laughs> but. But overall, I mean, the bottom line, somebody said, well, they couldn't have been that bad because here we are. We're president. And I think we're doing a really great job with my team. I have a team of just tremendous people. And I think we're doing a very special job. And I really believe it was time. And it was time to do that job. Because I don't think the United States would have done very well if it went through four or eight more years of regulation and really a very anti-business group of people. We have a very pro-business group. We have uh, regulations cut to a level. In the history of our country, Klaus, uh, this was reported recently. In one year, we've cut more regulations in my administration than any other administration in four, eight, or 16 years in the one case. We've cut more regulations in one year. And we have a ways to go. I mean, we're probably 50 percent done. And we're going to have regulation. There's nothing wrong with rules and regulations. You need them. But we've cut more than any administration ever in the history of our country, and we still have a ways to go. So I think between that and the tremendous tax cuts, uh, we've really done something. And one other thing I said, and I, I saw it last night with some of the leaders and the business people, I think I've been a cheerleader for our country. And everybody representing a company or a country has to be a cheerleader, or no matter what you do, it's just not going to work. And the reason I'm a cheerleader is because it's easy, because I love our country, and I think we're just doing really well. And we look forward to seeing you in America, special place, and where you are is a special place also. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Why is the tax reform why has it been of such a high priority for your administration? Uh, the tax reform was a dream of a lot of, a lot of people over many years, but they weren't able to get it done. Many people tried. And Ronald Reagan was really the last to make a meaningful cut and reform. And ours is cutting and reforming. We emphasize cut, but the reform is probably almost as important. We've wanted to do it. Uh, it is very tough politically to do it. Hard to believe that would be, but it is very, very tough. That's why it hasn't been done in close to 40 years. And once we got it going, it was going. And the big and, — and I wouldn't say a total surprise, but one of the big things that happened and took place is AT&T and some others came out very early, and they said they were going to pay thousands and thousands of dollars to 
people that work for their companies. And you have 300,000, 400,000, 500,000 people working for these companies. And all of a sudden, it became like a big waterfall, a big, beautiful waterfall, where so many companies are doing it. And even today, they just announced many more. But every day, they announce more and more. And now it's a fight for who's going to give the most. It started at 1,000. Now we have them up to 3,000. This is something that we didn't anticipate. Oftentimes in business, things happen that you don't anticipate. Usually, that's a bad thing. But this was a good thing. This came out of nowhere. Nobody ever thought of this as a possibility, even. We, it wasn't in the equation. We waited. We said, wait till February 1st, when the checks start coming in. And people, Klaus, have a lot more money in their paycheck. Because it's not just a little money. There's a lot of money for people making a living doing whatever they may be doing. And we really thought February 1st it was going to kick in and everybody was going to be, well, we haven't even gotten there yet. And it's kicked in. And it's had an incredible impact on the stock market and the stock prices. We've set 84 records since my election, uh, record stock market prices, meaning we hit new highs 84 different times out of a one-year period. And that's a great thing. And in all fairness, that was done before we passed the tax cuts and tax reform. So what happened is uh, really something special. Then, as you know, and as I just said, Apple came in with $350 billion. And I tell you, uh, I spoke with Tim Cook. I said, Tim, I will never consider this whole great run that we've made complete until you start building plants in the U.S. And I will tell you, this moved up very substantially. But when I heard 350, I thought he was talking — I thought they were talking $350 million. And by the way, that's a nice size plant. Not the greatest, but not bad. And they said, no, sir, it's $350 billion. I said, that is something. Well, we have tremendous amounts of money, including my newfound friends from last night. Uh, great companies. They are all investing. Uh, when one of the gentlemen said he's putting in $2 billion because of the tax cuts, I said to myself, wow, he's actually the cheap one in the group, mm -hmm. because they're putting in massive numbers of billions of dollars. So I, I think you have a brand new United States. You have a United States where people from all over the world are looking to come in and invest. And there's just nothing like what's happening. And I, I just want to finish by — I have a, a group of people that have been so out. So I have a whole lot of them, so I won't introduce, because then I'll insult at least half of them. But I've had a group of people that work so hard on this and other things. And we're really doing — we had a great first year, so successful in so many different ways. And there's a tremendous spirit. When you look at all of the different charts and polls, and you see, uh, as an example, African-American unemployment, at the historic low. This never, it's never had a period of time like this. Uh, same with Hispanic. Women at a 17-year low. It's, uh, it's very heartwarming to see. But there's a tremendous spirit in the United States. I would say it's a spirit like I have never witnessed before. I've been here for a while. I have never witnessed the spirit that our country has right now. So I just want to thank you all and all of those that are pouring billions of dollars into our country, or $10 into our country. We thank you very much. Thank you. I would like to acknowledge the strong um, yes. presence of uh, your cabinet members yes. here, who tremendously contributed to the discussions. Uh, Good. The last I, I would like to do that. That's very good. Yeah. Now, Stephen, Wilbur, Gary, Robert, even my general and my various other generals, you know. We're, we're making our military protection a little bit better for us, too. So thank you very much. Does everybody understand that? I think so. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President, for being with us. The World Economic Forum community who is assembled here will be certainly, and I quote you from the last piece of your remarks, will be certainly be among the hard-working men and women who do their duty each and every day, making this world a better place for everyone.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.